GDP is a measure of economic output, so it measures everything that's produced in the economy. But the main difficulty about it is that it only measures things produced in the economy with a money value, which has a transactional money value, if you like. So it's missing out on one really, really key group of activities, which is all the things that we do for nothing, we do for each other, and the things that we do which have no clear monetary value, or no explicit or stated monetary value. So it's only measuring uh, transactions in the economy, it's only measuring uh, economic uh, corporate activity in the economy, it's not measuring human activity which is unrelated to, to, to money, and that means it's not measuring well-being, it's only measuring turnover, if you like. And there's a second enormous problem attached to that, which is that in measuring those things, it's measuring an awful lot of things that have no human value, no real value uh, to us in our lives, things which are purely transactional. So, for example, it measures financial exchange transactions as being valuable, but it doesn't measure cooking a meal for yourself or your family in your home as being valuable. It measures uh, rising house prices as being uh, more valuable, but it doesn't consider the possibility of homelessness, for example, as a negative in that context. So it's doing two things which are very unsatisfactory, if you like. One is ignoring a whole area of activity which is really important, which are the things that people do for themselves and each other. And it's also measuring a whole lot of things, including things which contribute directly to uh, climate change and environmental degradation, which uh, should, in our view, have no value at all or have negative value. GDP is measuring everything in the economy with a, financial, with a financial element. And that includes things that cause pollution as much as anything else. So, for example, uh, if you're cutting down a rainforest, then you're generating GDP. You're also destroying the environment for the future and creating vast quantities of, of, of CO2. Uh, if you're travelling to work 50 miles and back, which some people do, then you're creating similarly large quantities of, of, of CO2 in that, in, in that journey. The journey is not adding value to anybody's life. It's simply the cost of getting you from A to B so you can do your paid work. So insofar as we can reduce the amount of unnecessary economic activity uh, in, in the world, we're going to significantly improve the um, environmental situation by reducing the impact of CO2 and, and creating global warming. That depends upon us being much more local in our approach to the economy. It depends upon us being much more focused on trying to achieve the things in the economy that we really want rather than focusing on anything which will generate money activity, irrespective of whether it's damaging or positive in terms of the environment, in terms of our health, in terms of our well-being. It's easy to say, look, smoking generates GDP, breathing fresh air doesn't. It's easy to say, uh, looking after your children at home doesn't generate GDP, taking them to a child mind that generates GDP. There are lots of clear statements that one can make which are... Um, will resonate, some with one person, some with another, which get the message across. Certainly, uh, I mean, shopping as an activity uh, generates colossal amounts of GDP, but also colossal amounts of waste. It generates colossal amounts of uh, transport around the world, trading of stuff around the world, things coming in from China that cost $3 when they left the factory and they cost £80 when they hit the high streets. Are they $3? let's even say three pound shoes, or are they 80 pound shoes? GDP says they're 80 pound shoes. The person who made them in the factory in China got paid a few pence probably to do so. Okay, so they had to be shipped over, that costs a certain amount of money, they don't come unless they're shipped. But still, there's an awful lot of value in there, which is transactional in, 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 in content, it doesn't add anything to the pair of shoes that left the factory. And that's where GDP is generating the bulk of its quantity from. And that's where we are feeding, if you like, we're feeding the GDP animal by constantly shopping for more and more stuff, rather than looking for more uh, efficient, more localised, more integrated ways of creating value in our lives. And that would include, for example, mending things, which we can do locally, we can do for ourselves. That would include uh, doing more for ourselves in terms of cooking meals for ourselves, in terms of doing uh, gardening for ourselves, growing our own vegetables. None of these things have any GDP value, but they have real value for us, and they cut out that enormous supply chain, which is all about GDP and not really about the value of the item that's in the supply chain. Buy Nothing Day is absolutely central to this, because what Buy Nothing Day is saying is, look, there's plenty of things that are valuable in your life which you don't have to get from a shop, so why don't you not go out and buy anything, but instead 
try to create value in your life by doing something which doesn't cost money. And that might be going for a walk or it might be talking to your neighbours or it might be indeed talking to your family or cooking a meal together. It might be anything of that sort. It might be reading a book. It could be a million ways of creating value in your life and that of your community which doesn't involve going to a shop and spending money.